Whenever you're seeking to do your utmost <laughs> for his highest, there's the temptation to make ministry more important than Jesus. You see, for centuries, Christianity has gone back and forth with this whole idea of religious observance or religious participation. In other words, there's a certain amount of teachings that you'll see if you look through church history where people were in communication with God. They dealt with God on a personal basis and they were very intimate and real with Him and they seemed to have affected churches and church in a big, huge, dramatic way. And then there's also, on the other side of the coin, those that seem to be kind of religiously oriented, that they had inspiration of the Holy Spirit and they seem to have changed church history in great ways, but they don't talk as intimate about God as you might hear from others. So there seems to be kind of a dichotomy of things going on. Some of them participated in some great works of God and seem to have accomplished some great changes in the church as a whole and church history. And yet there are some aspects of their life that you can see were pretty, eh, not so good. And yet the person who had a personal relationship, while they may not have been not so good, they seem to always have had a basis of grace. They seem to always have this consciousness of mercy, a overwhelming idea of forgiveness. So there's always that temptation to either make ministry or your relationship the priority. I don't know what you may do. I know for myself there's always that battle that goes on because sometimes you get caught up in, oh, you got a good idea, you know, God's given you this great work to do and you run with it and then you forget the Lord along the way. You kind of forgot to take the steps with Him to do with Him what He wants you to do, where you've gone beyond where He said to go. Me personally, I've seen, because I know Calvary Chapels, I've seen Calvary Chapels do that a lot, where a pastor will call to God, taught, trained, you know, and sent out, will sometimes go beyond where the Lord might be leading them, or not far enough sometimes, which is even more hilarious. But they don't really talk about the Lord completely as though God were telling them what to do. And the interesting thing is that whenever you kind of listen to Chuck on his teaching, sometimes you always felt like he was just finished talking to God and came out and shared. But other times, yeah, there's times where you don't really know what God wants you to do. You just learn as you go. And that's kind of the rough edges that I've seen sometimes in some of the ministers and pastors and ministries that were part of what I grew up with in Calvary Chapels that you know, they kind of had some funny ideas, you know, they kind of went off on little tangents at times, you know, and I remember one just recently, you know, putting out a, a big notification that he wanted to buy a Harley, you know, and it was like, wow, you know, that was really a prayer request, <laughs> you know, <laughs> God bless him, but, you know, <laughs> eh, you know, I didn't jump on the bandwagon. And there was another one that said they were desperate for money because they needed to remodel their bathrooms. And it was interesting because it was a big teaching on it, and I thought, man, somewhere along the way we're getting our priorities off track. But as the Lord needs, you know, so God wants us to have a personal relationship with Him. He wants to be the one who tells us when we've gone too far or not far enough. He wants to be the one who shares with us when we think we're going to challenge someone else when we ourselves are guilty of that same issue. And so be careful if you're a minister and an, in a ministry and you have a ministry that you don't elevate that ministry above your relationship with God, that you don't get wrapped up in the doing as a part of the being with Jesus. Because Jesus does want you to go out and do things. He sends out the 70, sends out the 120. He does do those things that we normally associate as being given some responsibility on our own and we go out. But in reality, when you look at the life of Jesus, as we do in the utmost, you see him always doing those things that pleased his Father. And that's our goal. It may not be our accomplishment, but that's our goal. So always remember to not get caught up 
in the everyday ministry stuff always get caught up with being with your Savior, with Jesus himself, with the Spirit of God as he leads you into the presence of the Lord, you know, and then you get to talk it over with him and then whatever God tells you to do, well then that you do, obviously. It is the Lord. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, give me to drink. How many of us are set upon Jesus Christ, slacking our thirst when we ought to be satisfying him? We should be pouring out now, spending to the last limit, not drawing on him to satisfy ourselves. You shall be witnesses unto me. That means a life of unsullied, uncompromising, and unbridled devotion to the Lord Jesus. A sanctification to him wherever he places us. Beware of anything that competes with loyalty to Jesus Christ. The greater competitor of devotion to Jesus is service for him. A lot of people do things for God, but the key issue here that you're going to find, I say a lot, is what are you doing with God? In other words, is He with you when you're doing it? Are you really doing things, asking Him to help you do it as you're doing it? Do you really say, Lord, you know, I can't seem to get this right. What do you think I should do? I ask God for things as simple as my keys. You know, Lord, I don't know where I put my keys. Could you show me? And man, it kind of like, well, there it is. Or, you know... It's a horrible prayer, but, you know, God, give me a parking spot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yay, you know? But in everyday things, the life of a servant serving God would be one of choosing to be careful of the one that they're serving or mindful of him. Meaning that you're always paying attention to Jesus. You're not distracted by practicalities you think are practical, but are really not because they're impractical to your devotion to Jesus. It's not about having a devotional in the morning and running off and doing your own thing. It's about having a love life that you would care to be walking side by side with Jesus throughout your day. The one aim of the call of God is the sanctification or the satisfaction of God, not a call to do something for Him. We are not sent to battle for God, but to be used by God in His battlings. Are we being more devoted to service than to Jesus Christ? And the only person that can answer that, really, is the Holy Spirit. You may think you know, <laughs> but others around you may be seeing a little bit different. And while it's nice that they may have some input, you know when you sit down and talk to God about it. You know where He has placed you and he wants you to spend time with him to hear what he has to say about every subject that is personal to you but likewise very much concerning to him because after all he loves you now in whatever you're doing do you love him? your actions are showing